Hello there, I'm Steve Caballero. I'm a professional skateboarder. I've been skateboarding since 1976. Turned pro 1980, so I've been pro 35 years. And I just want to say thank you for purchasing your brand new Golden Dragon skateboard. So now that you've purchased your very own Golden Dragon Skateboard, I'm going to describe the components of the board and show you how to put it together. First we're going to start off with the grip tape, which we put on the top of the board, which is made to hold your feet on the board and get better grip as you're making these transitions and trying to stay balanced on the board without your feet slipping off. Next we're going to step up with the, the deck itself. And this is made of seven plies of Chinese birch, all compressed and glued together to make a fine, really strong, lightweight skateboard, which has a nose and it also has a tail. And determine which is the nose and the tail, usually the nose is a little bit longer than the tail. On every deck, you have eight holes drilled into the top of it to hold the trucks on, the front truck and the back truck. And usually the trucks are held on with mounting hardware. So each Golden Dragon deck comes with Golden Dragon trucks. And the hangers are made to, to mount the wheels to. The so hangers are mounted to the base plates with the king pin, the nut on top, and two bushings. So next we're gonna talk about the bearings and the wheels. And each skateboard comes with eight bearings, which has seven small little bearings in case in each bearing to help the wheel roll really smoothly and fast. And each board has four wheels and they're made of a nice, good uh, urethane. Great for beginning skateboarding and right out the box, you're great to go for learning new tricks and uh, advancing your skills in skateboarding. So the first thing I learned when I first started skateboard was learn how to balance and then how to push. And what you want to do first is just try to decide which stance you are. If you have your right foot forward first, it's called goofy foot, the way Clover's standing on her board right here. If you Stand with your left foot forward like this, you're in the regular foot stance position. So it really doesn't matter what stance you are, it's what feels most comfortable for you. So that will determine whether you're regular foot or whether you are goofy foot. <coughs> so the first trick you want to learn is pushing. And since I'm a goofy foot skateboarder, I put my right foot forward. So you put the board down like so. Your right foot goes right over the front trucks with your toe pointing forward and as you take one push you put your back foot on and then you shift your front foot to the side so you're facing parallel for better balance. Ready? Set, go. Keep pushing. Now turn. So Tic Tacs or how you can get momentum without pushing. And what you want to do is you want to put your uh, back foot on and then you want to lift your front foot up and push down on your tail and shift your body side to side, uh, pushing off the cement to gain speed and forward momentum. There you go. You guys are shredding. All right, so when you're first starting a skateboard, you want to have safety equipment and it's really important to protect yourself. First, we're starting off with the helmet protects the noggin. You want to protect the brain because that's how you function. We got to make sure that the helmet fits correctly too. So you want to size up your kid and make sure the helmet uh, is not too loose. Uh, it fits really snug. So when you're first starting out skateboarding, you're going to fall on your wrists and your elbows a lot. So you, what you want to do is you want to protect yourself with a nice good elbow pad and wrist guards. And these will help you uh, give you a little bit more confidence from falling forward or falling backwards. So another important uh, part of safety equipment is your knee pad. And uh, what you want to do is get a proper knee pad that has good padding and a nice plastic cup on the top to, uh, to help you knee slide. And we'll talk about knee slides towards the end of the video. Having pads, elbow pads, wrist guards, helmet, knee pads really uh, give you the confidence to progress to the next level. Oh, you're welcome, son. Hey, Clover. 
Okay, so uh, now that we've explained how to stand on your skateboard, how to push, how to do tic tacs, we're going to get into some more advanced skateboarding, which is going to take uh, safety equipment. Vans half cab, got to have a skate shoe. All right, let's go skateboard. So one of the most advanced moves, actually when you first start a skateboard, is learning how to roll into one of these steep inclines. And if you find a nice little mellow bank at one of these skate parks here, it's a pretty good place to start. And what you want to do is, uh, you want to start at the top, put your front foot forward over your bolts and take one little push. And as you're dropping down the incline, you want to make sure your shoulders are parallel to the wall so you don't lose your balance falling backwards or leaning too far forward. So you're straight parallel with your board balance as you drop in. Ready to go, Caleb? All right, let's go. Drop in, lean forward, and balance. It's one of the easiest tricks to learn is the fakie, where you go up to the wall forward, and then you come back down, coming down backwards. One of the essential things when you're doing a fakie is you want to look forward as you're going up, but as you're coming back down, Backwards, you want to turn your neck and look the way you're, you're going. We're going to push, go up to the wall, do a fakie, turn our head, and look back and go the other way. Hey, you ready to do it together? Yeah. Okay. Push, fakie, turn around. Yeah, you did it! We're going to get into some more difficult tricks, and one of the first tricks you want to learn is a kick turn. And we're going to start off with front side kick turns. Here we go. What you want to do uh, on a front side kick turn is basically go up the wall uh, with your weight centered. As you reach the top of the wall, you lean back, lifting your front wheels up and pivoting your, on your back wheels as you spin your body around a 180. So Caleb's going to demonstrate a front side kick turn. Good job, buddy. So Caleb and I are going to show you how to do backside kick turns, where your back is now facing the wall that you're uh, approaching. If you're having trouble doing your backside kick turn, what's helped me is using your shoulders to turn where you want to, to lead your body. Since your back is uh, to the wall, once you go up and you do a backside kick turn, you want to always point your shoulders down to where you want to go as you're coming back around doing the 180 on the wall. Now we've learned the basics of kick turns, front side and back side. I'm going to teach you how to carve. And carving is basically the same thing as a front side and back side kick turn, but you leave your wheels on the ground without lifting them up. We're going to go for a back side carve first. Right now Caleb's still learning how to do a carve. Here, here he goes for one. Almost. What helps keeping your wheels is pointing your toes on a backside, putting a lot of pressure on your toes as you're carving the turn. Put pressure on your toes, buddy. There you go. That's a backside carve. Good job. <laughs> so now we're going to work on a frontside carve. The only difference between a frontside carve and a backside carve is the weight distribution. And you want to put weight on your heels this time as you're carving front side with your face facing the wall. This is a front side carve. You think you can do it? Yeah. Without lifting? Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do a front side carve and a back side carve on this bank right here. Get on your heels. Turn. Now we're going to go for a backside car. You want to put pressure on your toes as you're leaning in to, to make the turn. And that's how you carve. So the next thing that we want to learn is how to bail correctly, which is called the knee slide. And knee slide has definitely helped me in my career to progress to the next level and help me bail safely without rolling my ankle or falling and tripping. Me and Caleb are going to uh, show you how to do a knee slide. And basically what you want to do is you want to run and step one foot forward and then go right to your knees and lean back as you're sliding on the caps on your knee pads. Ready, bud? Set, go. 
If you lean back, you won't fall forward and you keep your body centered. And it's, this is a really great way to learn how to bail uh, when you're learning tricks, especially when you're flying like five, six feet off the lip and you need to fall. Instead of running out, you can just do a basic knee slide. Set, go. Good job. Me and Caleb are gonna show you how to do a knee slide, actually doing it off your skateboard and out of a trick. I'm gonna show you how to do one coming off a kick turn. It's a safe way to bail out of a trick and you're not gonna run and trip over your feet. I highly recommend doing knee slides. <laughs> way to go, Caleb. All right, kids, thanks for joining us today. We had a great time. Hope you learned some great things about skateboarding, about skateboards. Uh, me and Caleb are uh, gonna go have a session now, so catch you guys later. So first off, we're starting off pushing here. Take a couple pushes. Maybe do a couple little tic tacs here. And then we're gonna drop in and then we're gonna carve around. This is called the backside carve. You keep your wheels on, on the wall. Do a couple. Now we're gonna do a kick turn, backside. Now we're gonna go into a frontside carve. In this corner right here. A little frontside kick turn. Another backside kick turn into a fakie. Let's go fakie right here, buddy. Where you go up and come back down backwards. And then we're gonna do a knee slide. So the first thing I learned when I first started skate, ah, why am I saying that? <laughs> <laughs> so it really doesn't matter what stance you are, it's what feels most comfortable. Ah, I can't even talk. <laughs> She's getting a kick out of it. Was that a purpose or was that real? Hey. <laughs> Sorry. Glad you had your helmet on. <laughs> you should have knee slid out of that. <laughs>
People, they only see the outcome, but they don't know what really goes into it. The guys used to spit on Tony back in the day. It was so discouraging that I was gonna quit. How in the world could this guy be the world champion and just walk away from it? My dad, you know, he never wanted me to skate. And he goes, you're going nowhere in life and I'm doing this to save you. I was miserable at everything I tried to do. I rode a bike, tried to do a wheelie, the front wheel fell off, I crashed. Skateboarding, it was the first time I was good at something. <laughs> Not only were they unknown, they were all picked as a very young crew. When we got into skating, you did not become rich or famous if you were good at skateboarding. No one did, no matter how good you were. I just remember looking at my arms and the goosebumps, and I just witnessed history. It was the moment where skateboarding became skateboarding. Hawk just got bigger and bigger every time I came out of jail. I was pushing a shopping cart, Hawk was on a Slurpee cup. I'm here in representation of thousands of other kids who worship those guys as well and whose lives that those guys changed. When I started skating, it gave me a sense of identity, it gave me a sense of self-confidence, it, it gave me a purpose. Ooh, teachers would reach out, is he autistic or I, I don't know. Skateboarding, what it represented, the ability to create, to express myself, it became my voice. I just look back at my life and I feel so blessed to be a part of this whole scene. Two hour film out of the material we have. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>